All right, you're welcome again. As I told you earlier, I'm going to consider how to calculate your GP. You get it? Okay. Let's see how you as a student, you can calculate your GP. It's very, very important. What I'm about to tell you now, or what I'm about to show you now, it's worth 250. Yes, it worth 250 now, right? When uh, we resume in a hundred level, during the orientation, a man came. He was selling the book, how to calculate GP. So uh, our mind was blowing. Hey, hey oh, this and that with sweet mouth. At the end of the day, we bought it 250. So what you're about to see now, is what is contained in that 250 naira book so you are not paying anything i just want you to pay attention and see how your gp is being calculated all right let's see okay now you know you have gotten admission and you are being offered a given course that is you apply for a course and maybe they give you that course or they give you another course. All right, we are going to treat uh, a problem like that. I want to see how you can handle that situation. You get what I'm saying? Don't worry. If I failed, please remind me how to handle a problem or a situation whereby you applied for a course and are given a different course entirely. Maybe you don't like it at all. Please remind me. I'm going to tell you what you are going to do. And it's going to uh, benefit you very well. All right, let's go. I'm going to see how to calculate GP. Okay, I'm going to use, for example, a gentle boy that has been admitted into a faculty of science. And under the faculty of science, a math department. Then in the math department, is offering mathematics all right now you are going to use him for example okay now you discover that you are going to be dealing with some courses that is something like subject you know when we're in secondary school we call it subject okay actually in university we call them courses okay you are going to be dealing with some courses so you have course outline for every semester and then every course there is what we call credit unit every course has a credit unit even it you know sometimes in your 400 level you go for it if you are in faculty of science complete one year if you are in engineering you may go for maybe half semester you do it two times or some similar things all right even those uh, things they have their own credit unit all right now let's go so now some courses are having one some may have two some may have three some may have four yes it depends all right now this credit unit is talking about the weight of that course the weight of that course and more also it will also tell you how long the lecture may last for a week you understand for some courses that are uh, something like three credit unit you are expected to attend lecture not less than three hours in a week not less than three hours in a week you understand so those credit unit is talking about the weight of those courses all right let's see for example this young man is having some courses and then some of the courses we have mth 111 that is for first semester and then the credit unit is three and then mth 112 the credit unit is three then mth 113 credit unit two and then mth 114 two credit unit ST1112 two credit unit chem that is chemistry 111 three credit unit chemistry 103 that is one credit unit physics 111 three credit unit 
uh, fees is 117 one credit unit and then GNS 111 two credit unit okay all right the MTH is mathematics ST is statistics chem is chemistry and then physics you know it's physics all right that uh, chemistry that is having one credit unit is practical laboratory chemistry and then the physics that is having one credit unit is also a practical all right now let's go then GNS is English all right now let's see these uh, mathematics uh, these courses they are having different uh, credit units all right let's see okay as you have this credit unit the total is 21 credit unit all right now let's go let me show you another thing okay let's see that you finished uh, your exams let me show you how uh, it's been uh, marked and calculated this is for ATBU particularly not for any other school this is for ATBU particularly now when you score 70 and above you are having a you are having a and a is excellent if you score 60 to 69 you are having B and B is very good if you score 50 to 59 that is C and C is good 45 to 49 is D and D is fair fair and then 40 to 44 is E and E is pass then 0 to 35 is F and F is fail all right now in university they deals with grade point they deals with what grade point now those are a b c d e f it has uh, its own point now a is having five points so that means when you score 70 and above and you have a so you are automatically having five points then if you have b you are having four point c three point d two point e one point and then f zero point all right now let's see for instance if this gentleman i'm using this for an example it is not real please now this let's see for instance that this gentleman in mass one two one uh one 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 he scored sixty five and then in the grading sixty five is b see what's going to happen is this b is having how many points four point so i'm going to multiply the four point by the number of the credit unit for that particular course you understand MTH 111 is having three credit units and then he's called 65 and 65 under grading point under grading is having B and then B is four point then we're going to see four multiplied by how many credit unit of mass 111 and then mass 111 is having three credit unit so we're going to see four times one okay then we'll give you two of then in math 112 is having three credit units and then he scores 70 and then 70 we give you a and then a is having five points then we'll see five times the credit unit the credit unit is three then we'll have five times three then we'll give you 15. then in mass 113 scored 46 and 46 is d then d is having two point then you say two multiplied by the credit unit which is two it will give you four then you have uh, mass one one four you have uh two credit unit and it's called 74 74 is a and a is is having five points then you say five times two which is ten all right now st 
is two credit units is called 57 and then 57 is a c c is having three credit unit and then three multiplied by two will give you six then km one 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 three credit unit is called 64 64 is b and then b is 4.4 multiplied by the credit unit which is three it will give you 12. All right now we um came 103 then it's called 43 and 43 is e e is having just one point then one point multiplied by the credit unit and then the credit unit is one then one times one is one and then physics 111 is three uh, credit unit and then he's called 58 58 minus c sorry 58 is c and then c is three point then three point multiplied by the credit unit which is three to give you nine now if it's one one seven is one point then it's called 74 then 74 is a a is five point five times the credit unit which is five uh, which is one they will have five times one five then gns is called 80 and 80 is a and a is five point five uh, times two which is ten now you sum up his total points which is 12 plus 15 plus 4 plus 10 plus 6 plus 12 plus 1 plus 9 plus 5 plus 10. Now when you sum them, when you sum them up, you have 88 points. This uh, gentle boy is having 88 points. Now look at how it's being calculated. He will say 88 points divided by how many credit unit total what is the total credit unit the total credit unit is 21 so we're going to have 88 divided by 21 it will give you 4.19 so 4.19 is his what his gp his gp his grade point now this uh grade point how will you know is it first class, second class, third class, or whatsoever? How will you know? Now, we have this. If you have from 4.0 to 5.0, you are in first class. If you have 3.50 to 4.49, you are having second class upper. If you have 2.40 to 3.49 that is if your point is in between from four uh, from 2.40 to 3.49 you are having second class lower and then if you have any point from 1.50 to 2.39 you are in third class and then if you have 1.0 0 to 1.49 you just pass and then less than that is fail less than that is fail all right now this gentle boy is having 4.19 and 4.19 falls between 3.50 to 4.49 which is second class upper this gentle boy clicked second class upper in his first semester result. Now, there is another thing called CGPA. CGPA, which means cumulative grade point average. Cumulative grade point average. Now, what is this talking about? Talking about cumul uh, cumulative, that is combining them all together. Then you discover that this data we have here is just for first semester. And then let's assume that in his second semester, his result, his total credit unit, sorry, the total credit unit, yeah, in that uh, second semester is 19 total credit unit is how many 19 and then he have the total point of 85 
So his GP for that particular semester will be 85. That is his total point divided by his total credit unit. 85 divided by 19. Then it will give us 4.47. That is his GP for that particular semester. And then you discover that after the first semester, the rest, they are, they are no longer dealing with GP. Rather, it is now CGPA. You understand? So it is only your first semester that your GP will count. So the rest, you are dealing with CGPA. You get it? What I mean is this. Your first semester, they will give you your particular GP. Then your second semester, they are not going to give you that your particular GP. They will combine it with your previous GP. Do you get it now? So they are going to combine it together. Okay, now see what I'm trying to say. Your first semester, you are having 88 points, right? Then your second semester, you are having 85 points. Now we're going to add them together. You will have 88 plus 85, which will give you 173. Is that true? Yes. And then the total of your credit unit in the first semester and then the second semester. The first semester was 21. And then the, uh, the first semester was 21. Then the second semester is 19. Then 19 plus 21 will give you 40. All right. Now you discover that your total grading point in first semester 88. Second semester 85, you join them together, which is 173. Then 173 divided by the total credit unit of first and second semester, which will give you 173, that is 173 all over 40. It will give you your CGPA, which is 4.325. And then approximately 4.33. 4.33 all right now that is it in 200 level you enter 200 level now and then you take some courses and then the courses is a total of to, uh, credit unit was a 19 and then what you scored is what this gentleman boy scored is 78 78 right now you discover that if you calculate it 78, okay, let's say the credit unit is uh, 21, sorry, let's say it's 21. That is for 200 level first semester, the uh, credit unit is 21, let's assume it's 21. Then you have 73, that is what he, his total grading point, 70, 73, right? Now you have 73. Let's use 73, okay? Now you have 73 divided by the total. Divided by total credit, which is 21, right? So it will give you 3.47. 3.476. Approximately 3.48. Approximately 3.48. All right? Now, you discover that still it will be combined again. So you are going to have this 73 plus your first and then second semester of your 100 level, which is 173 plus 173. It will give you a total of 246. You understand? Then 246, right? Now, 246 divided by the total credit unit of your 200 level and your 100 level. So, you know, in your 100 level, the total was uh, 40. And then this second, uh, to, uh, this is your 200 level now. You are having 21, right? So, it will be 40 plus 21, which is 61, right? Then you have 246 divided by 61. It will give you 4.03. 4.03. So in your 200 level, you are having this gentle boy is having 4.03. You get it? That is the more you go, the more it will be combining with your 100 level. 
everything will be combining together. So if you get to 500 level, 500 level, all your works, all your grading point from your 100 level to that your 500 level will be combined together and then divided by the total credit you need to be offering from 100 level to that 500 level. So at the end of the day, your final point, then it will be categorized either pass, third class, second class, uh, lower, second class, upper, or first class. You understand? Discover that when combining all these things at the end of the day, you see that it is not easy. Not at all. All right. You discover that first class is not easy. But I'm going to make another video. How one can boost his GP. How one can boost your CGPA. You can actually attend to this first class. Those people that are having first class, they don't have two heads. They have just one head like you. So I will show you practically, not by guesswork or whatsoever, practically how you will boost your CGPA and then you work with first class and how you will maintain it until you graduate with first class. I'm going to show you in the next tutorial. Please, let's go. Any question, you can ask a question. We just treated how to calculate GPA. And then in the next tutorial, I'm going to talk about how to boost your GPA. And then how to, how to actually make this first class. You know, first class is very possible, but it's very difficult. I'm going to show you steps, step by step, how we're going to make it. All right. Thank you very much. See you next time please don't forget subscribe